Like like we did with um, Merle and Waylon, we're just gonna look at the top ten. Like Saving Country Music does top ten badass moments by these different artists and shit. So we're gonna do that about uh, George Jones this week. Even though I'm not gonna read them all because some of them are just like he recorded, he stopped loving her today. He recorded, uh, who's gonna fill their shoes? I'm like, okay, yeah, he just recorded songs. We'll get yeah, to those like songs you, if, later. <laughs> it's not really like a milestone to yeah, record the song. Yeah, you, you just, could, they yeah. could they could say something like. You know, he recorded this song, which became blah, 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 greatest, you know, whatever, single, ever kind of shit. But just recording it, that's kind of a funny thing. It's just like, yeah, he was alive on this day. But what is a great moment in George Jones history is he rode a lawnmower to the liquor store. <laughs> which oh, my God. A, which is a very well-known story. Um, I'll just read it verbatim from this. Uh what this is probably the most notorious George Jones story, but what a lot of folks don't know is that George Jones chose this slow moving mode of transportation to procure alcohol more than once. The first and most well documented lawnmower incident was in the late sixties. George Jones was living eight miles outside of Beaumont, Texas, when uh, with his then wife Shirley Ann Corley. Jones had experienced a few number one hits by the time, and this success fueled his wayward ways with alcohol. He was a drinking so bad his wife Shirley resorted to hiding all the keys to the vehicles before she would leave the house so George wouldn't drive to the nearest liquor store in Beaumont. But that didn't stop him. <laughs> After tearing the house apart looking for a set of keys one time, he looked out the window to see a riding lawnmower sitting on the property under the glow of a security light. There, gleaming in the glow, was that 10-horsepower rotary engine under a seat. A glistening, uh, a key glistening in the ignition, George recalled in his autobiography. I remember the top speed for that mower was 5 miles per hour. It might have taken an hour and a half or more for me to get to the liquor store, but there, but get there, I did. <laughs> The second lesser-known incident of George <laughs> Jones' escapades on a riding, riding lawnmower happened when he was married to Tammy Wynette. Taking a cue from, the George, from George's previous wife, Shirley, Tammy hid all the keys from George, but George had been down that road before. Wynette woke up one night at 1 a.m. to find George missing. I got into the car, drove to the nearest bar 10 miles away, Tammy recounted in 1979. When I pulled into the parking lot, there sat our rider mower next to the entrance. He'd driven that mower down a main highway. He looked up and saw me and said, Well, fellas, here she is now, my little wife. I told you she'd come after me. The George Jones lawnmower incidents later went on to be memorialized as many country videos, including Hank Jr.'s All My Rowdy Friends Are Coming Over Tonight, Vince Gill's 93 hit One More Last Chance, that includes the line, She might have took my car and keys, but she forgot about my old John Deere, and John <laughs> Rich's Country Don't Come to Town, and George's own Honky Tonk song. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, and I'll always think of the just the retelling of it in Tales from the Tour Bus, because they talked about the the one where he... You know, one of the times when he goes to the liquor store and he's driving down the road and he didn't turn the mower deck off. So he's just yeah. launching the rocks on the side of the road all over the fucking place. <laughs> and he just didn't give a single fuck about it. It is uh, incredible. I, I wish I had watched the uh, Tales from the Tour bus before we did this episode because the George Joan episode is, is yeah. so Well, because I was going to say, I don't know if it's on your list of things, but the other another item that he did that is just, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily badass... But he was tied to the tree by Waylon Jennings. <laughs> yeah. We've talked about that a few times on this yes. podcast, and it's 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 such a funny thing. Just because of the line where it's just like, I'm the biggest name in country music. And he goes, yeah, well, now you're tied to a fucking tree. <laughs> I'm tied to a fucking tree. It's like, yes. Incredible. Uh, <laughs> which is also, I, I think about the, the lawnmower thing, which is obviously hilarious. But it also goes to show, like legitimately how much of an actual alcoholic he was where he's like it's going to oh, yeah. take me an hour or more to drive this thing to the liquor store and like mm -hmm. an hour back and he's like yeah no i'll do it I'll, I, I need it and it's just like jesus yeah. christ man yeah so for those of you who don't know if you're listening because you like the list newer music we talk to or whatever or talk about uh george jones was, i talk to music was <laughs> george jones was literally known as no show because he would get drunk and not go to his his own concerts <laughs> like yeah <laughs> that's a thing just about get george liquored jones. up yeah um another badass moment was he walked out of the 1999 cma awards so he said ahead of the 99 cma awards george george jones was enjoying yet another resurgence in his career george jones was slated to perform the song choices on the cmas but when producers insist he must sing an abbreviated version he walked out of the ceremonies and boycotted the show in a super act of class and solidarity alan jackson halfway through his performance of papa top stopped down uh stopped down and shifted gears to perform choices and protest the event uh 
has gone on to be considered one of the biggest moments in country protest of the of the history of the genre. So I know we talked about that on the Alan Jackson episode yep. because we talked about how that was one of Alan Jackson's most badass moments. Yeah. Because yeah, it's George Jones was just like fuck this, I'm done, and Alan Jackson's like, wow, you really did that to George Jones of all people, like yeah, a legend. It, it, it's crazy to think about you know that happening. Just with how big he was at that time. I mean, like ninety nine, he's he's done all the big hits. You know, like the only shit that was yeah. left to come was "I Don't Need Your Rocking Chair." Like he he, he had done it all, and uh, for them to just be like, "Yes, George Jones, living legend, uh, we're gonna make you do this abbreviated set or whatever." It's like, well, what's the fucking point? Yeah, it's nonsense. Yeah. Um. Sorry, I was reading another. Thing just to make sure it's worth talking about. Um, you wouldn't dare on the list, read. It's overcoming his personal demons. I thought this isn't really a badass moment. I just think it's kind of cool what he wrote. Is uh, some people assume that becoming a rich celebrity solves many of your problems. When uh, for many artists, it exposes and fuels their problems. Such as the case with George Jones, who had major issues with alcohol and later in his career drugs. At one point in 1979, despite being one of the best-selling artists in the history of country music, he was bankrupt and destitute, living in his car, weighing around 100 pounds, and living off junk food. George spent time in men- mental institutions, tied to his drinking multiple times, and had to be straight-jacketed on numerous occasions. He became known as No-Show Jones because he missed so many engagements over his career, as we said. Uh, no. but, in me- but in many ways, George Jones' bad behavior over only helped his reputation. His fans didn't turn on him. They loved him more because he could- they could relate to him and and their own personal struggles and uh, because he was such a great artist and performer when he would show. Alan Jackson once said about Jones, what I like most about George is that when you meet him, he is like some old guy that works down at the gas station, even though he's a legend. Waylon Jennings and others first helped get George Jones sober in the early 80s, and the result was a resurgence of his career. However, later in life, George Jones would fall back into his old habits, but George gave up drinking and drugs for good in 1999 after wrecking his car and spending two weeks in the hospital. After the crash, he pleaded guilty to drunk driving charges. George Jones told Billboard later, When I had that wreck, I made up my mind. It put the fear of God in me. No more smoking, no more drinking. I, haven't, I didn't have to have no help. I made up my mind to quit. I don't crave it. So that's pretty cool. It is pretty cool to to have someone make that, you know, revelation and, and be able to do it on their own without requiring help. It's kind of a crazy thought that a guy like him who was so in the booze for so many years. I mean, obviously yeah. he's older and then he gets in a wreck and like he can kind of prioritize like how much how much more does he really have to live? And if he wants to elongate those years, he's going to have to, you know, make some changes. But they'll still think it's a, it's a crazy testament to his, you know, I don't know, his 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 will, I guess. It's just kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, number 10 on this list, it wasn't – it's not one I don't think is a badass mo- uh, moment, but it's something I thought was worth kind of saying is that he has the greatest male voice in the history of country music. And here's some quotes from other artists where uh, – Johnny Cash says, when people ask me who my favorite country singer is, I say, you mean besides George Jones? And then (laughs) Garth Brooks says, the greatest voice to ever sing country music. Frank Sinatra said, the second best singer in America. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. Uh, Waylon Jennings said, if we could all sound like we wanted to, we'd all sound like George Jones. And Dolly Parton says, anyone. I've heard that one. Yeah. Uh, Dolly Parton says, anyone who knows or cares anything about real country music will agree that George Jones is the voice of it. So, yeah, those are some moments. That, yeah, the other ones were just, like, they weren't really moments. They're just, like, he's a good duet partner. It's like, well, yeah, he's a good singer, so of course he's a good duet partner. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, I don't so, know. That is straight-up shocking to me. Yeah. But, yeah, so that's some little things about George Jones. Um, I can't remember. Was he, is he called Possum because he looks like one, or was it something about way acted? I couldn't remember. I don't remember. I feel like it was... At least a little bit that he looks like him, if not completely. But I want to say it was because um, he looks like. One, I think I think that's what it wrong. was. I could George see how it would make sense that he was always like drunk and playing dead because he was like dead from being <laughs> drunk. But I don't think that's where it started. I think you're right. I think it was the way he looked. Uh, yeah, I'm just. He also had right like he. I don't know what it is about George Jones, but like his hair 
looked hilarious to me. Like, a lot of the old pictures of... The sideburns the way, and shit? Yeah, like, the way that it all came together, it looked like he was always wearing a helmet, and it didn't yeah. make any sense to me. <laughs> it, did, it did look exactly it's like It's like, a there's no way it's that so that's true. actual hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Yeah, I'm not. I don't want to sit here reading forever. So yeah, I see one. It says the shape of his nose and facial features earned him the nickname Possum. So yeah, that makes I sense. Guess it makes, makes a lot sense. of sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say because I couldn't remember if it was how acting or if it's because he looked. But yeah, it's how he looked. Um, but yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about him. If we think anything while we're talking about his songs, we'll you know. Yeah, and and I think I think George Jones is one of those that he he's so like clearly recognizable as a yeah. as a person as a as a country artist that you, it there's really no point to read off a bunch of shit about him mm-hmm. if it's not going to be like something that people have really never heard before and we are not yeah. the outlet that is going to all of a sudden f- find yeah. some sort of tidbit about George Jones that yeah, you've never heard before like i remember when we first started off the podcast we tried doing like biographies about people and it's like yeah we're not very good at this let's just talk about the songs we like yeah and and we're going to just be reading something that someone else wrote so if we're wrong it's just someone else was wrong that we were just yeah. relaying it and so just to say fuck it we won't even we won't try to relay anything and we'll just be safe that way yeah so let's hop into his top 10 songs that aren't as good as Sam Hunt songs. I <laughs> will leave this fucking room right now. <laughs> okay, bye. All right, so guys, anyway, Sam Hunt. Yeah, no, so good episode. See you later. <laughs> I said right, it was yeah. going to be a short one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally 13 minutes long. Um <laughs> Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, maybe I was thinking about how our other pod, if we do it, would be shorter. But we'll talk more about that in the future. Um, future. Future.